All right, so we did a little um, introduction to logistics earlier in class, but uh, we probably glossed over a few things. We probably want to go through it in more detail. Um, so let's jump into it. Uh, this is the population, N for population and T for time. So uh, our logistic equation starts with the change in population with respect to time is equal to a n minus b n squared, where a and b are just constants. Now, the trick, and probably something that I didn't make clear enough in class, is that um, usually when you've got a derivative, it's the change in y with respect to x is equal to some function in terms of x, like uh, x squared plus 2x, something like that. But this one is not in terms of the bottom thing. It's not in terms of t. It's in terms of n. So you can't just integrate that uh, or anti-derive it uh, simply. It's much more complicated than that. So that's our problem with, with the sort of this first step. And that's why this ends up going like that. You can see it gets pretty, it's pretty big. All right, so stepping through it. First step, factorize to bring the n outside and then rearrange um, so that all of the n's are on one side and all of the t's are on the other side. You've seen this, this before. So we've rearranged it to look like that. Now, I always think that that's not totally clear. It's actually the integral of 1 over n a minus b n with respect to n equals the integral of uh, dt. So now that you've got that, you only need to focus on the left-hand side because the left-hand side is the most complicated side. The integral of, of dt is, is simple. So to integrate this, you're going to have to use partial fractions. Now, I am not going to run through the partial fractions bit. You have done partial fractions before. Uh, so eventually, using partial fractions, you'll end up here. Uh, because by using partial fractions, you can find that 1 on n a minus b n, so this step here, is equal to 1 on a on n plus b on a on a minus b n. And then you can step through here, integrate that, integrate this, and you'll end up at this step, and here we are. All right, so that's sort of, that's, it shouldn't be too tough so far, but you may want to sit and go through those steps for the partial fractions. Now, what that means is that this is where we sort of almost started from. This is this was all the way back uh, there. So the reason we did all that partial fraction stuff was so we could rewrite the integral of dn over n a minus bn as... 1 on a ln n on a minus bn. So this is equal to this, uh, plus c because it's an integral. Uh, and then we've got this integral here with respect to t. All right, so it really brings us to uh, this point here. And then we really glossed over this in class. We went from this line to this line. And I said, look, that's going to take like eight lines of working. And it is going to take quite a while to go from here to here. You can see like a K kind of appears here. Uh, it's pretty magical. Let's let's take a look at what happens. So we're getting from this step to this step. All right, so it starts at this, and the integral of dt is just uh, t plus c. And I've got like a, I already had a c there, and I've got another c there. And because they're just arbitrary constants, I can add them together into one c. So that's what I've done in the next line. Uh, now, after that, we've got a 1 on A here. So I've just taken the 1 on A, brought it to the other side as multiplied by A. So I'm taking T plus C and I'm multiplying both by A, expanding AT plus AC, uh, and then writing it in exponential form. Because this is LN base E N over A minus BN, I can take the base E, raise it to the power of this, and all of this stuff appears on the other side. Uh, now, this is probably the, a small leap uh, on, actually, this next line is not too bad, e to the at plus ac. We can split that up as e to the at times e to the ac, and then the small leap. 
e to the ac is just a number. Uh, so we can take that small, that number and call it k. So now we don't have e to the ac, we just have e to the at times k, which looks like that. k e to the at equals n over a minus bn. Uh, now can rearrange this, a little bit of rearranging here, here, and then here. Uh, and then what you can, what I just make one more small leap here. We said e to the ac is k, uh, but that was like an arbitrary constant. So what I've chosen to do, I choose to make one over e to the ac k instead. So that just brings this k from here up to the top. Um, and there's my, there's my finish point here. So that was the steps to get from this line to this line. Okay. And then they do what I would say is just a little bit more magic because they get from a to the negative bn over n equals k e, uh, k e to the negative a t. Um, all right, where are we? So to do that, you can follow these steps here. Actually, it's not too magical. Multiplying by n, um, bringing bn to the other side and factorizing n out. Basically, we're just making n the subject of that. Okay. And then, so we've got n to the, t oh, sorry, n equals a over b plus k e to the negative a t. Now, using initial conditions, when time is equal to zero, n is equal to n zero. Uh, so at time zero, uh, our initial population is n zero. So if we do sub in t equals zero into this, that's gonna be k times e to the uh, zero, which is just gonna be one. So then that's just gonna give us a, a on, on b. Um, oh, sorry, e to the zero is gonna be one. So it's going to be 1k. So it's a on b plus uh, k, which is what we have here. And here's our initial population. So now we can say that k, that arbitrary constant that we generated a little while ago, that we generated up here, um, is equal to a minus the initial population times b over the initial population. So then they get from uh, here to here. So they, they, what they essentially do is sub that into 4K into the function that we had up the top. Um, and I've done the working for that here. Uh, sub K into this, so subbing K into that function. And that'll yield this function here, or it'll yield that function there. Okay, uh, and finally, Two significant features emerge from this solution. Um, A over B is going to be uh, the limiting population. And then um, we talked about feature two here. Don't need to worry too much about this, but the important thing to note is that when we're asking about maximal population, we had our graph, a uh, logarithmic graph like that. The maximal population is where the population is um, is at is changing at uh, the fastest rate, I suppose. So it's it's here. It's always halfway. Uh, it's always half of the limiting population. All right, that's the only other interesting part there. Now all of that were the notes from the class that we had the other day. Um, but then you jumped into the worked example and had a lot of trouble. So. Next up, we'll jump through that worked example, which is complicated, uh, but we have a, a new way of doing it, which should make it much, much easier.